Hi, um, my name is Sam Barclay. I'm 28 years old. I'm from Southsea, just like uh, just like he said. And my story begins where um, when I was at school, struggling with dyslexia, not knowing what I was good at. Oh, sorry, I moved this slide. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, it brings me to where I am today, talking to you as a freelance graphic designer and having self-published my own book. Uh, I wonder what it's like to be dyslexic through Kickstarter. So my school years were spent struggling with dyslexia when a teacher told my parents I was just a bit thick and, um, <laughs> and, uh, and I was told by a headmaster, I like, got dragged into his office and told that if he didn't start making an effort, I'd, um, I'd end up a dustbinman. So he told me to leave his office with my best foot forward um, and I walked out of his office trying to put what I thought was my best foot, ended up, didn't know which was my left or right. Um, so soon after, I was in a different school where my parents began their fight for the best education available to me. And it was at this time, I was in about year five, and I didn't even really know the alphabet. Um, so about eight. Um, and, oh yeah, and this is me winning a, a bike that I designed a gift, gift card for, for a local restaurant. So after school, I became a plumber, and I did that for about six years. And although I was enjoying it, I didn't really fancy having my head stuck down a toilet for much longer. Um, so I started a foundation course at Portsmouth Uni um, doing art and design. I, um, I then, soon after, was, uh, was doing a graphic design degree at Portsmouth Uni also. Um, not long after, I was in my third year where I was given the International Society of Typographic Design Briefs, where you had to explore the idea of, of the book, whether that be printed or digital. And I, um, I decided to... Um, to like, inform my research on how, um, on how we read with typography. Um, so I found, looking back at when I was younger, that everything that was made for dyslexic people was um, aimed at making them read better. So I then, um, yeah, and there was, nothing, there was nothing around dyslexia actually making um, people have an understanding of what it's like to struggle with reading. Oh, sorry, I haven't moved on the slide. I've completely forgot about it. Um, so whilst carrying out my research, I found um, a phonetics tool called TrueSpell, um, where I could translate text into words, how I said, not spelt. And it was actually really amazing to see how much that messed up the words, and also quite crazy how I used to spell some of the words in a very similar way. Um, another, tool, another tool I used uh, was to translate the text into capital letters. And this actually slows the pace of a reader down quite drastically. Although it doesn't actually seem like quite a big deal, it kind of is when you're setting a whole paragraph of text like that. So to test these ideas, I, um, I, I translated a short story from one of my favourite books, A Small Pleasures of Life. Um, and I gave it to a few of my friends, a few of my flatmates, a few people at uni to see what would happen and to, just to see the effects of the short story. Um, and it was actually quite interesting to see how they were getting frustrated with reading it and really annoyed like I was when I was younger. And at that point, I knew that I'd hit the nail on the head with the book. So I then went on to complete my final year. I graduated with a first-class degree at Portsmouth Uni. I, uh, I got a commendation from the International Society of Typographic Design. I also got shortlisted um, by the Future Pioneer Award, well, by the Design Week by, um, in the Future Pioneer Award at the New Designers event. So at this point, all I wanted to do, I keep forgetting these, sorry. <laughs> um, so at this point, all I wanted to do was get, um, get in a job, get in, my, um, get in a perfect studio and start work. But meanwhile, at the same time, my parents were putting a lot of pressure on me to self-publish the book, that, or publish the book that, that I'd made at uni. But at the time, like, I, I couldn't really see a way of it working because there was nothing for me to, you know, to push it. Um, until my brother mentioned Kickstarter to me and had a look around and just thought, well, why, not, why the hell not? Let's give this a shot. Um, so started uh, started hard, um, working hard on getting the book up to scratch, designed prints, designed, um, I met with printers to see if this was all possible to like check costs and stuff. And we also, um, I also spent a good month getting the Kickstarter campaign up together. Oh no, that's the video. Sorry, um, still this one. Um, yeah, I've spent a good month getting the. Uh, the Kickstarter campaign up together to show the possible backers exactly what they were getting for their money and where the money was going and what, what, what it was being spent on. So we also looked at um, other, other costs like packaging, fulfillment, and the cost of fonts, and also the video, and like everything else that sort of came with it. But I'll just show you the video now.
name's Sam, I live in Southsea and I'm dyslexic. After seven years in education and six years as a plumber, I recently graduated from Portsmouth University with a first class degree. I also got a commendation from the International Society of Typographic Design. Being dyslexic, one thing always stood out. The available help was always aimed at making me read better. Very little effort was made to help the people around me understand what it feels like to struggle with reading. I've combined my passion for typographic design, my experiences of reading difficulty and a great deal of research to create this book. My aim has been to create a beautiful design-led experience of what it feels like to struggle with reading. I wanted this book to be equally at home on your coffee table as in a school classroom and a business environment. People that have difficulty reading are often capable of thinking in ways that others aren't. Encouraging those with reading difficulties, whether it be dyslexia, a lack of education, an unfamiliar language, to excel in ways that make sense to them is not just important, it's crucial. If one person who has reading difficulty is understood and as a result treated fairly, we will have achieved something amazing. So, um, so we worked really hard to get promotion for the book um, for the time that it was, the duration that the whole project was going. I was actually really, actually really over the moon to get featured on it. Um, it's nice that. Um, and after a week of being on Kickstarter, the project was actually going quite slow. Um, and then one evening, my phone started going crazy with emails. Um, put it to one side, went to sleep, woke up the next morning and found that um, I had a few missed calls from my brother and my mum and actually found that I'd been featured on Huffington Post. And that very next day, we ended up smashing through the marker, um, through the 14,500 marker. And then soon after, I was lucky enough to get featured on the rest of these. And this was pretty much my reaction every time I was getting featured on something new. <laughs> um, anyway, so we, uh, I ended up getting, um, we ended up um, finishing funding on uh, 55,000 pounds, which is absolutely insane and did not expect it at all. Um, we then worked hard, well, then the hard work began from ordering everything from um, the posters to the flyers to stickers to the packaging. Um, and then, uh, and then, um, and then sending the book off to print. Obviously, this was actually quite nerve-wracking for me, as, I've, as I'd only just come fresh out of uni, and I'd only ever printed anything out of my 100-pound A3 printer. Um, and at the time, it was pretty nerve-wracking to go from this to that. Um, but actually, it was an incredible experience. Like, once you get to deal with printers and stuff, like, obviously, being fresh out of uni, I didn't quite understand at the time, but it really helped to gain experience to to be able to do something like that. And obviously, like, when, I, when we were printing on this, it was 2,500 books, and then on my A3, it was only one, so quite, quite a difference. So this is me as the, uh, as the packing, uh, packaging had turned up and starting to think, well, what the hell had I done? <laughs> Thinking it even more. <laughs> and the start to taking over my parents' house. And I really underestimated how much stuff 2,000 books and packaging was. So this is at the end of day one, packaging everything up. Um, and when I realized how much work was ahead of me, I had a lot of help from my brother, my mom, my dad, and a lot of my mum's friend as well were helping up packaging up the books. So I owe a lot of thanks to them as well. And this is my brother climbing over the, uh, climbing over the mountains of books. Me um, working away hard, lost in cardboard. So after, after four days hard graft, we finally actually got somewhere with the books. And then uh, this, this is the start to a hefty all-nighter checking off that we'd made sure that we'd packed all the books correctly. Obviously, as you can see, the cat found it extremely stressful. So um, the next morning, loading up the van, getting ready to send the books out to the fulfillment company, which, um, which is actually an incredible relief to get them books off and get them sent out. But the, uh, the book is now sold in over um, 20 countries all over the world, um, from France to New Zealand to parts of Asia and all over America, and not to forget my mum's coffee table. The reaction to the book was absolutely, like, seriously overwhelming, and with like-minded dyslexic people uh, contacting me, and now they could actually explain to people what it's like to be dyslexic. And also um, parents of kids um, now understanding what their kids are going through when they're at school. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's this. Oh. 
Um, so this is some of the people with the book all over the world. And it was actually really, um, again, overwhelming getting pictures of people with the book that I'd made and printed. And it's such an incredible feeling as well. Um, yeah, and I'd like to thank all of those that, uh, that had helped promote the book. And also a big thanks to the people that had actually bought it. So I'm not blessed with dyslexia, or nor do I struggle with it as much as the next person. In fact, I don't really care for my dyslexia. I've always done things I lo I've loved doing and not fixated on the things I'm not so good at doing. And I'd encourage everyone to do the same, and also to use tools such as Kickstarter to do so. Kickstarter really did, and excuse the pun, kickstart me into my dream career. Um, and without it, I wouldn't be here still talking to you today, so thank you. <laughs>